Uh huh. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> I, I don't know. What are you? What are we supposed to talk about during the Armageddon? I don't know. What deity do you follow? Mm. Well, <laughs> does you that know, fall under things you're not supposed to talk about? No, I think you just. I think to be safe, you follow them all. Ah, I, I see, do that at work too because you know I tell them, hey, you know I've got to take off Christmas and Easter, of course, mm-hmm. but I've also got to take off Hanukkah and Ramadan and uh, Rumspringa and. Uh, I got to take I don't off. Know if that was exactly a holiday. That's like, a, what would it be? That'd be like a baptism in a religion. Well, still. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they don't know that. <laughs> I mean, the way, here's the way I look at it. If I can, oh, Festivus, don't forget. Festivus. Oh, Festivus. Yep. If I can figure out every single day for the Museum of Off Road Adventure mm-hmm. is something that happened in the history of something. you know off road vehicles, mm-hmm. then surely, surely I can figure out that. You know, makes sense. Yeah, you maximize know, your time usage. You know, I just got an idea. Maybe not an entire episode, but I got an idea. Of something we could talk about okay. here in a second. It's time to hit the trail, lock in those hubs, and throw it into low range. Because you are listening to Wheel It with Keith and Johnny Orange. Broadcasting from the Thin Line Off-Road Studio. They're here to talk about 4x4s, trucks, and everything to do with enjoying the great outdoors. Buckle up. Here's your hosts, Keith and Johnny Orange. So the other day I'm sitting there and I'm doing some research for Mm -hmm. our This Day in Off-Road History for the museum. So sitting on the can on your phone, got it? Sure, exactly. (laughs) And, uh... I found out something that I never realized before. And it was the just screwdriver wrench thing. It was just no, not the screwdriver <laughs> wrench thing that you showed me earlier. No, uh, that was today, right, right. Yeah. Okay. Carrying on. March twenty seventh. Okay. Nineteen fifty two. Okay. Good year. Is, well, not it wasn't it wasn't a decent day though. <laughs> because on that day, the world lost both Jujiro Matsuda and Kichiro. Toyota. Oh. The founder of Toyota. Toyota goes that far back? Toyota goes back to the 30s. Wow. So the founder of Toyota and the founder of Mazda, both Japanese um, automotive, you mm-hmm. know, massive giants here, both passed away on the exact same day in hmm. Japan in 1952. Unrelated. It, it wasn't like they were in a car crash together or something like yeah. that. They just unrelated. Hmm. Um, Matsuda passed away of old age. Um, I couldn't actually figure out what the cause of death was for Toyota. He was mm-hmm. actually kind of young. He was in his 50s. But uh, kind of an odd deal there, yeah. you know. But, um, no, I just hmm. I thought that was just one of those weird things. I thought yeah. it'd be it'd be really good for Wheels in the Woods Ooh, for one of our trivia, tri- uh, for yeah. one of our trivia questions. You know, you note, d- note to those of you listening who are going to be there. Yeah, absolutely. You know, you, you do like you just say, um, oh, you do multiple choice or whatever, but mm-hmm. we just say which founders of which two Japanese yeah, companies yeah. both passed away March twenty yeah. seventh, nineteen fifty two. Keep going. I'm going to look some up. Somebody sent me <laughs> some comments about our last episode. I forgot to read. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, bring them up. That'd be awesome. Um, oh, that's a lot. So yeah, no, I was sitting there and I was uh, working on those and just finding out some interesting uh, things. This day in off road history has been a very popular thing that we've done, mm-hmm. and it's actually been booming in the last week or so, even more so. Yeah. And I think that's just because people are more at home, of course, because oh yeah, you know. But uh, you know, with all the news out there, of course, about the COVID nineteen and everything like that, people might appreciate you know these historical things. Oh yeah. Yeah, now is a good opportunity to, you know, read all that stuff you've been wanting to learn about. And, yeah. And, you know, get out there, work on your rig. You got time. <laughs> well, that's true, too. You know, you can Note go. to self, get to garage. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, I worked on uh, Project Excursion this week, too, so. I I don't think I worked on anything, really. You might you might actually get a kick out of this, or, well, I don't know if you get a kick or you're going to be a little upset, but I'm. I'm upset? What? What? Uh, well, <laughs> so. Um, what would you do? I'm gonna. I'm just gonna tell you oh, what happened okay. here. The whole thing. Um, so 
you know, shout out to Rivers Edge Wash and Lube here in Marine City, Michigan. Um, John Freeman, I think he might be a listener occasionally. Hello, sir. So um, <laughs> he pretty much runs the place. Um, he's not the owner. I don't know the owner's name, but mm-hmm. he's pretty much the guy who runs the place all the time. Um, they have shut down because of the everything's going on here mm-hmm. uh, temporarily, hopefully. But they're the ones that always take Project Excursion and do my oil change. Remember, I've yeah. talked on the show before about how it's yeah. cheaper for me to go there to get oh, an yeah. oil change than it is to do it myself. Yeah, most places won't touch anything I've got. <laughs> well, uh, Nobody knows where anything is. Well, there's so. that too, right? You know? yeah. and That's this, okay. So this is kind of the problem I had. So um, I'm way overdue for an oil change. I, Same. I know I need an oil change. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I got the time off. I'm laid off now. Let me go see... You know, go get the stuff for it or, yeah. or whatever. So I drive down to Algonac, uh, a town I grew up in, Bracket Auto Parts. We've talked about mm-hmm. uh, Matt at Brackets before. I know he's a listener. Uh, shout out, Matt. Hello um, again, sir. And uh, so I needed to get some other automotive supplies. But right next, um, you know, down the road, whatever, uh, from him is, is an oil change place. And I, mm-hmm. I go in and, um, you know, the guy... Uh, I pull in. I said, "Well, how much? I just want the oil God, and the filter, oil and filter changed, you know." And uh, the guy's like, "177 dollars." <laughs> and I said, "Whoa, <laughs> so, whoa, yeah, that's the most expensive." Is that I've, like a buy one get one free coupon with that or something? I, I don't know. It did not include a uh, grease job. It didn't include anything, Jeez. as far as I know. Um, I just so I went over to Matt's and I went into brackets. I'm like, I'm going to get everything myself, you know. Mm-hmm. So I go in, I happen to walk in the door, and as I'm walking in the door, there's another guy at the counter there, um, and Matt just makes a joke, and he's, you know, he sees me walking in the door, and he goes, uh, well, we're only selling oil and filters today uh, because of the social distancing, and I, oh, well, perfect, that's what I need, I need an oil and filter for Project Excursion, yeah. <laughs> so he kind of laughs. Well, then the guy at the counter, um, right there, we're in this small town auto parts store, looks over at me, he looks over out the window, and he goes, oh, uh. Uh, is that a diesel excursion? I said, yeah. And he goes, oh, well, uh, I find oil's cheapest at Walmart. Um, and, you know, and I'm thinking, you know, the guy's not, maybe he's not lying. Mm-hmm. But to say that at the counter in yeah, front of. Yeah, that's not cool. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty tacky. Yeah. So oh, yeah. I just looked at him and I said, man, I go, in this time, there's nothing wrong with Walmart. But in, in this time, um, I'm going to shop local. Yeah. I'm going to support local. And he kind of gave me a dirty look, you know, and, you know, and well, not like, Matt, the other guy, you the know. The phrase I would use, I can't say, so. <laughs> well, I will tell you off air the phrase Matt said. <laughs> oh, I want to know this, because <laughs> it's probably what I would have said. <laughs> and uh, so, you know, well, then the guy's sitting there, and, uh, well, I will tell you this. The guy's mm-hmm. sitting there, and he's uh, um, he's trying to get some part for, I don't know what, but, uh, yeah. you know, Matt says, hey, man, I can get this for you tomorrow. And the guy's like, oh, I'm going to go see if I can find it somewhere else. And. Matt, after he walked out the door, Matt looks at me and he goes, well, he goes, I really had to bite my tongue. I, I almost told him to go look at Walmart for it. <laughs> so, nice. I was like, well, you know. But uh, no, so he ended up getting me, um, you know, and if anybody listens and they're, they're local, I don't know how long his sale's going, but, you know, I said, hey, I need 1540. And he goes, you know what? I think the CarQuest brand 1540 uh, is on sale right now. And I says, nice. I says, oh, okay. And so he ended up, I mean, it was, I don't know the exact prices, but I know that I got out the door with five gallons of oil because the excursion takes four, Mm -hmm. and I just bought a five-gallon bucket, five gallons of oil, and a whole box full of other garage supplies I needed, you know, carb cleaner and some diesel fuel treatment and all sorts of stuff for 90 bucks, everything out the door. Dude. You know, filter for the excursion. Um, The oil was dirt cheap. How how long is the sale going? I don't know, man. I know how late they're open. I Matt, need oil. You know, Matt's a supporter of the museum. He's been yeah. down to the museum before I've got and everything. a filter. I mean, I really just need to change the filter. I'm <laughs> topping oil so frequently. <laughs> I'm telling you. I really um, got to fix that. Bracket Auto Parts, uh, B-R-A-C-K-E-T-T. There's two T's in it. I'll have to give him um, a call. In Algonac, Michigan. Go down there. Um, great guy. And oh, yeah. I've been going in there for over 30 years now. And, mm-hmm. and, you know, I know that the big box store is around the corner from my house. Mm-hmm. I know I could go there. But... I'm laid off. I got the time. Yeah. And my opinion is in this time of need, support the small businesses Absolutely. first. Big corporations, they can probably handle themselves. Oh, yeah. Yeah. These small businesses, I'm going to go down and mm. I did that. So I needed those supplies and that's what I did. Um, I did a little bit of that this week myself. And did you? Yeah. I went to the scrapyard, wandered around there for a couple hours, 
So as, as you know, and I think some of you guys listening and following, I do a lot of outdoor cooking and cooking. All I use is cast iron, and I love the old vintage and antique cast iron, and I'll hunt the scrapyard every now and then see what I can find. And in about two hours wandering, I found three broken ones, uh, some of the cheap Chinese Taiwan import junk cast iron. Mm-hmm. I think it's pronounced China. <clears throat> Whatever. <laughs> Sorry, that's a bad joke. Yeah, I, I, that one went right over my head. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, around two hours later, I found one that was just pitted. I mean, it looked terrible. Mm-hmm. And uh, normally that particular yard sells by the pound on that. So I went in and says, I found one. He says, yeah, five bucks. Like, Oof. Especially for the condition. I mean, this thing yeah, was a yeah. solid ball of rust. But... I wandered around for two hours. I wanted something to do in the next three weeks because after that day, they were closed for three weeks. So I can't go back. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I got one. I, I got it for five bucks. Yeah, there you go. And got home. I actually wire wheeled it at my buddy's house. I seasoned it up. It's pretty badly pitted. But what what, what season did you use? Uh, canola. Canola comes in the uh, no, uh, the big gallon uh, shaker I, container. I'd, I'd use Mrs. Bay's or uh, something like that. Be a little... It's a little sticky, though, when you oh. start cooking stuff in it. It, it <laughs> kind of burns a little more. Yeah, man. <laughs> no, I, so I, I got that. I thought, you know, I've been going through all my old pans. This one actually dated uh, its early Lodge to about the 40s. Lodge was around that long? Lodge came around the the. Th- 20s or 30s, I believe. Oh, no kidding. And the guy who actually founded it started at another company called Blacklock. Yeah. And that was the premier, you know, 1800s, early 1900s cast iron was Blacklock. Yeah. And to date, there are no known examples of actually marked Blacklock, as far as I'm understanding it. You know, it just, so many of the markings and their casting marks and everything were either not documented, so there's no way to prove it was them. Or it gets in, you know, rolled into some of the early lodge stuff. You know, so, um, yeah. this my mind just started <clears throat> reeling backwards. You know, in, mm-hmm. in my ADD, I'm thinking about things, and I'm thinking about your cast iron here, mm-hmm. and I'm thinking about how long we're going to be laid off. And let me pause for a second. Um, our YouTube listeners are probably going to see John and I are sitting, you know, we're you know four feet away from each other, or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you might be like, oh, social distancing. Well, John and I have spent so much time together mm. over all of these years and, and all the time. We're basically family. And so um, anything John caught last week or the week before, <laughs> I've got and vice versa. So probably got a better chance of getting something from all the midgets that run around here. Yeah, there's that too. <laughs> uh, but I was thinking, uh, I'm thinking about if we're, if we're laid off long enough here, uh, my place up in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. Mm-hmm. You know, I do have another place up there, and you're allowed to travel currently between residences. your residences. Yep. Um, that place up there, I've really needed. I was 20 miles back in the bush. Nice. From the nearest, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's by Munising, Michigan. You know where nice. that is. Oh, yeah. And, I got a buddy who lives up there. And I. I think uh, he's up there. I don't know. He's burning? in the some. No, but there's him too. I forgot yeah. about him. Um, <laughs> so we. Uh, we're way back in the middle of nowhere. Obviously, that's perfect social distancing unless you get oh, yeah. coughed on by a deer or something. <laughs> and, <laughs> You're getting TB then. <laughs> <laughs> I told Stephanie that earlier today. I told nice. her that. Uh, but uh, anyways, I got thinking about it. Underneath my counter there mm-hmm. at my, my cabin up there, I have got a bunch of old cast iron stuff, but it's nice. all rusty and it's some of it's like it's not seasoned or anything like that. You know, mm-hmm. maybe you should come up and check it out, see if there's anything you want for your collection for or this. mess with it. You got uh, a waffle maker, I'll buy it on site. I want uh, one of those. I so think bad. I do. I mean, obviously I don't want to get rid of all of it, but I understand. maybe you can help with some of it. <laughs> oh, um yeah. we could take a trip up there and just check I'm on totally the cabin for, for a couple days or something. Yeah, I'm for it. I've never I don't think I've ever oh, I know I've never been to your place up there. No. No, I don't think I've even been. I've been through Munising once or twice, I think. All right. That was a long time ago, though. (laughs) Well, you know, um, rambling on here a little bit, but, uh, you know, we're just kind of talking about what people have been up to. You've been up to your cast iron. I'm kind of getting Project Excursion. Actually, I dug all the rest of my cast iron out, too, that I've been hiding all over the place. Found one of the ones in my Jeep. Same thing dates back to the 30s. And I've just had that in my Jeep for cooking, you know, bonfires and stuff for years. Nice. So I've got, uh, I have one pan in my basement that came from my dad's mom. So my grandma on his side, I never met her. But I've got one of her cast iron pans. Okay. 
So, yeah. And then I cook with all the others. <laughs> cool. So. Why don't we take a quick break, buddy? And then uh, when we come back, I think we've got some more 4x4 stuff to talk good. about. Uh, you mean get to 4x4? Get to, yeah, <laughs> probably get to it. You talk the excursion. Sure. We got that. <laughs> See you in a minute. Hey, it sounds like it's time to swap out that old engine for something better, John. Yeah, man, but I have so much into my trans and transfer case set up already. I don't want to change those two. Sounds like you need to call Quick Draw Brand Adapters. They specialize in conversion bell housings for nearly all diesel and gasoline engines, including the new 2.8R Cummins. You know, I like weird engines, though. I want something different. Then you definitely need to visit quickdrawbrand.com today. They have those hard-to-find parts. They also have used diesel engines available. You can call them at 513-446-9654. Cool, I'll do that. See what they have. Thanks. So in this this time of everything shutting down and you know people staying at home, mm-hmm. uh, unfortunately, at least in the state of Michigan and of course probably nationwide, museums are shutting down temporarily. Yeah. The Mora is currently not open to the public. Mm-hmm. That's, that's part. Bummer. That's actually part of. Uh, it's the first time it hasn't been open to the public since we opened. Yeah, and. Uh, that is, you know, our state shutdown says we, specifically museums. We can't museums. even do by appointment with that, can we? No, it says oh, museums bummer. can't be open. But as you know, uh, and I'd like to do a little bit of, uh, you know, kind of bragging of what we've been doing, <laughs> the museum, um, what we decided to do with the museum was to try to help our first responders here. Mm-hmm. And this last week we had two uh, supply drives for our nurses and our first responders. Mm-hmm. The museum was open last Saturday, but then, of course, the order came that we had to close. And yeah. so then Wednesday, again, we did a supply drive, but we were just at the front door there, and mm-hmm. we didn't have... No uh, access. Yeah, no access. Yeah. But uh, what we did was we were asking for masks and gowns and booties and anything Mm -hmm. medical supplies the first one we did was a mask drive and then after that we did was full medical supplies yeah drive the first drive there uh the mayor pro tem uh which is basically the vice mayor of elginac michigan Mm -hmm. came down with 151 masks oh wow to donate to area hospitals and we have a network of nurses that we're working with through the museum of off-road adventure nice that we were able to turn those over to the very next day nice and i mean how awesome is that that we've been able to do that so i know i've got a few i mentioned to you earlier i've got a few at home i'll get some contact info and run them out to them for perfect perfect so um if you're a listener i mean this is a worldwide problem right Mm -hmm. now and you know we're not trying to get too political or anything like that but You know, what shocked myself and some of the other museum, and you're one of them, uh, Mm -hmm. our museum, uh, you know, board and staff here, was when we found out through um, one of our museum uh, board members is a nurse, and then Mm -hmm. we have a friend that has been to the museum multiple times, and she came and said, hey, we've gotten to the point at the hospitals where we're being recommended to tape coffee filters to our faces because we are out of supplies. That's crazy. And so uh, something that I talked about on a lot of our Facebook Live videos was that a lot of our automotive hobbyists, people that have things in their garage (laughs) Mm -hmm. or even woodworkers, they have dust masks and face shields and all sorts of things that Mm -hmm. can be useful to our first responders. Yeah. Get them to your local nurses. Get them to your local mm-hmm. hospitals. They're at the point now where our one of our local hospitals that four days ago said they were never going to accept anything homemade is now asking for homemade masks, Jeez. cloth masks. Have you have you seen these ones that are 3D printing them? Yeah, unfortunately, I, Preston has a 3D printer, yeah. but he looked at the file. His The bed on his 3D printer mm-hmm. is just a little too small. Oh. So he can't print. He was going to. But um, that's really cool too. That people are doing that. Split that in half and then attach it. You'd have to glue it or something. There's yeah. no, there's no way. I don't know if that would work or not. But yeah, well, we can talk later on that. Yeah. Just, I mean, there's ways you can heat it and just do it that way. True. A true. Plastic weld or something. Anyways. But <laughs> I, I guess my, um, you know, I I want to. Did I mention his name? The mayor pro tem, Rocky Gillis. I don't remember. I'm sorry. Well, okay. Uh, if I didn't, the mayor pro tem of Algonac, his name is Rocky Gillis. Mm-hmm. And like I said, 151 masks. That's awesome. That I talked to 
uh, you know, one of the nurses that is part of our network that we got these to, mm-hmm. one mask used sparingly can be used for up to five days. Oh. One mask can be five days of protection Jeez. for a, uh, you know, one of our nurses' first line responders here. Yeah. I mean, 151, that's a lot of protection. Oh, yeah. That is awesome. So, oh, yeah. Um, you know, Rocky Gillis, awesome person. Um, I've known him for years because he's actually a shirt sleeve kind of relative of mine. I mean, nice. I guess he would be. He's, he's my brother's sister's nephew. <laughs> so anyway uh, well here's the deal be your nephew then well no no okay i i will i will never call him this but my brother as you know Mm -hmm. has a different mother we've never done the half thing i actually did not know that okay um (laughs) he still calls me exactly we've always been brother brother and sister you know yeah i never brothers and (laughs) uh my sister same way Um, but Rocky and I used to joke back in high school because we went to high school mm-hmm. together that he's my half step nephew in law because <laughs> 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 we got to figure it nice. figured it out that way. But um, in reality, we 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 have not really relation, but same yeah. family. That's cool. And he said he saw on Facebook. He said he had all these supplies from a relative that had been sickly at one time mm-hmm. that's now passed away, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, but he said. He said he saw on Facebook that night that uh, the the museum was doing that. He said he'd wanted to come to the museum anyways. Mm-hmm. He had been meaning to check it out, and he was like, "Boom! I know what I'm doing with this stuff." You know what? This might be a dumb question. Can they use vinyl gloves? Um, right now they're asking for nitrile. Okay. But vinyl very well could be something when they run out of nitrile. If they run Find out of out. nitrile, I've, I've got some size smalls. I think. You know, we My can, we can ask gardening. Our, we so. can ask our contacts. Yeah, yeah I'll, absolutely. I'll, I'll, remember to do that as soon as we get off here. So it's just a really cool thing. Um, oh, absolutely. You know, but speaking of that social media, you know, I wish that we could do. There's a lot of museums out there that are uh, doing like walkthroughs of their museums online. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, our museum is basically a big Faraday cage. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as it's in a metal Quonset hut, so as soon yeah. as you walk in. No cell service, no, no Wi-Fi, no nothing, <laughs> nope. uh, which is kind of nice because people can actually pay attention to the museum. I, I do love that aspect about it. Yeah, you know, it's like you're you're there. I mean, yeah, you can't do anything else, but you're not there to do anything else. You're paying, so, yeah, you're paying attention yeah, to the museum. You're interacting with the people, exactly, <laughs> which is not good right now. But <laughs> exactly, um, but you know, uh, oh, that was something I wanted to mention before I, I get off onto the. A social media aspect of it during those drives we did have some uh businesses that donated things now oh. thin line off road i own mm-hmm. what i did was if you brought at least one thing didn't matter what you brought you brought a mask brought whatever i gave you a t-shirt mm-hmm. uh one of our supporting your first responders as a thank Wait, you so for every mask i bring i get a t-shirt we do it within reason. Oh, <laughs> so, come on. <laughs> uh, t-shirts. Uh, if it, Originally, we did if you did one mask, you got a T-shirt. Yeah. If you did five, you got a hoodie. Uh, Foxfire Fixins Restaurant. If you donated at least uh, 10, you got a $25 gift certificate. Ooh. And <laughs> if uh, you did a... Um, uh, Twenty or more, Codex mm-hmm. True Value Hardware does, and they still this is this offer still out there for now. Mm-hmm. If you do twenty or more, they're going to give a approximately two hundred dollar um, Dewalt quarter oh. sheet Paul Sa- or uh, not Dewalt um, Milwaukee, Milwaukee. Um, yeah, quarter sheet that. Palm Sander. Nice. So um, and that's still for grabs as of this recording. Oh, but cool. uh, so that was awesome. These local businesses that were willing to step up and donate mm-hmm. some things as a thank you to the people donating these supplies. Yeah, that's awesome. But back to our social media thing, um, you know, we're doing our best to do our daily upgrade, you know, updates and mm-hmm. and things like that. And even like Twitter now, uh, all of a sudden, the American Alliance of Museums was retweeting stuff that we were doing for the mask drive, oh, and they were cool. you know were saying, "Hey, you know, support these guys." And so that was really I, cool. I missed that. That's awesome. Yeah, it was really cool. cool so, well, on the note of social media, kind of changing subjects a little bit. Yeah, I was going to let you get into that. Yeah. Sorry, it was a long story no, on our social media. So, but, oh, so a friend of mine, Michael Vinoy, uh, he said he so he just finished the bug out episode. And his vehicle of choice would be like an older Deuce and a half or Humvee. Okay. And then... Um, Personally, so, I'd probably go Deuce and a half over the Humvee in that situation. I, I think I would agree. It just seems like it would last a little bit longer. 
Yeah, I mean, and I know they're not as terrible get you know fuel mileage as you would expect. We just did an, that, a we just did a this day in off road history about the Humvees, and mm-hmm. a whole bunch of military people chimed in about how they're not a fan. <laughs> I've heard that so many times. <laughs> yeah, I still want one one day just because they're cool. Yeah, but I, I love the one of uh, how to uh, acquire a Humvee. Open door, flip this switch, wait till light goes off, flip it. Now you know in a Humvee. It's pretty much any military vehicle, buddy. I um, love it. But anyways, Michael Vinoy, so, what did he say? Yeah, uh, finish the episode. So we won't go into this whole thing for obvious reasons. Um, so his question. Oh, was he saying how sexy I am? No, 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 that, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> so his idea was about ideal bug out guns. Well, guns. And that's an interesting one. Yeah. So he he's you know keep in mind multi use parts repair availability caliber availability. Sure, sure. And then he he had a few suggestions here. So you know thinking like a three gun or four gun sort of combination. I don't know if we want to get into that whole yeah, yeah. thing right no, now. No, go ahead. What, oh, what the heck? Well, what was the right. suggestion? So I'll read you his. Oop, let me go back into it. Here. Oh here. Oh let me guess. Let me guess. Let me guess. Okay. I haven't. I have not. I swear I've not no, read this. No. Um. I would say something. Nine mil, something forty-five ACP. Uh, there's not a forty-five on this. There's list. not a forty-five. No, nope, maybe a Winchester thirty thirty. Nope. Ooh, wow! I am Actually, just. I don't know the caliber on that one, so that could be. I mean, you're not stalking like the two two three for the AR AR fifteens and stuff, are you? Well, so that he's kind of generalizing on a couple of these. So okay. a decent but good quality, you know, stock ish AR fifteen, Glock nineteen, which I don't know what caliber that is. Uh, that I, I, I think is a nine. I could be wrong, but I think you can get the Glock nineteen of multiple calibers. Oh, okay. No, um, a, it, I, is I it know. just nine? Producer Andrew's shaking his head over there. Okay. So yeah, oh, so Glock nineteen yeah. might just be a nine mil. Yeah, a Ruger ten twenty two takedown. Okay. A twelve gauge. He said Shockwave or similar, like an SBS five hundred or like a Remington eight seventy. Okay. Oh, that's shotgun? Yeah. Oh, yeah. No. Um, so I, I would absolutely uh, agree with the 870. Yeah. The 12 gauge pump. I yeah. I think you can get those in 20. Uh, but again, you're talking, you know, more common availability for ammo and parts. It's a rugged, reliable gun. Yeah, I absolutely. My brother very, has an 870 yes. that was my grandfather's. They're yeah. fantastic, fantastic yep, guns. So 12 gauge 870. Um, the, I 100% agree with the 22. A22 of some sort. For the mm-hmm. simple fact, you can hunt with it. It's not the best self-defense weapon, of course. Yeah. But you can hunt, you know, small game with that. You can carry a ton of ammo for that, and it doesn't weigh a ton. I mean, that's that's huge. You know what? Let's take, uh, let's take a quick break. Okay. Let's take a quick break. And Oops. afterwards... I want to talk about one gun in particular, and I got some stories about that one gun. Okay. <laughs> and... um. <laughs> Something that I think, actually, in my opinion, mm-hmm. might be a decent bug out gun. I like it. I've got uh, one as well. I can suggest. All right. So, see you in a minute. Ah, spring. It means so many things: birds, flowers, warmer temperatures, and oh, let's not forget bugs. <laughs> Don't let pesky bugs take over your home. Call ABC Home and Commercial Services. They have the solution for your spiders, wasps, box elder bugs, Asian lady beetles, cluster flies, and more. ABC Home and Commercial Services, the best in pests. Call 810-794-5678. That was quick. What was quick? (laughs) Quick break. Oh, did you not have time to do what you (laughs) needed to do? No, man, I had to hit the can. It was going to be a few minutes. Oh, what, do you want to take another break? No, it's okay. (laughs) Um, I'm kidding. I did not expect to get on guns or rifles Mm -hmm. or anything like that in this episode. But with that being said, uh, one that I want to throw out there that I already said. Mm -hmm. Now, this is my own opinion here. I think the old cowboy-style Winchester 94 uh, 3030 rifle. Amazing gun. They're, well... (laughs) I haven't had the best of luck, mm. but I take think, it off your hands if you don't want it. No, no, no. <laughs> um, I think that that's a pretty good bug out gun. And here's mm-hmm. a couple of reasons that I have for this. One, it's a super simple, very reliable, very durable gun. Yes. You can throw it in the dirt. You can whatever with it. Mm-hmm. And it's probably still going to fire. Mm-hmm. It's extremely lightweight for a rifle. Yeah. You pick it up, and I think they're only about, I don't know, two and a half feet long. They're not very long. They're maybe twenty eight inches. I okay. I don't know. Um, no, that'd be that'd be really short. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I I can measure mine. I I don't know. I mm-hmm. but 
They're not very long. They're very lightweight. You can carry them all day under your hand if you're walking through the brush up yeah. and the you know you're hunting. And I'm not a big hunter, but mm-hmm. you know I've got one and walk through. In, in the apocalypse, everyone is. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's that. Uh, the round for them, though, from what I understand, and maybe you can correct me because you probably know a little bit more about ballistics and rounds. Mm-hmm. But from what I understand, with the thirty thirty, um, that uh, that particular round, it's got a lot of powder behind it, a lot of power, mm-hmm. but. You can use it to knock down something, say, like a deer. Oh, yeah. But that same round, believe it or not, I've heard people say that you can hunt small game with it. Um, it'll because it the velocity and the size of the smaller bullet that's, that it has mm-hmm. can, will punch a hole through small game without expanding rapidly. And you, see that. you can actually hunt. I've talked to people that have hunted yeah. partridge and uh, squirrel and stuff with 3030s, and they say they really don't do a lot of damage because it doesn't have time yeah, it to expand. Yeah, it passes through. It passes through. Your, your, your only issue there, one, expense of it for what you're getting out of it. I'll give you that. The rounds Again, are not SHTF, cheap. HTF, you know, scenario is a different Sure, game. sure. The other, it's still a rifle round. It's still got a lot of power behind it, so you have to be more careful of your, you know, what's beyond your target. A deer, chances, you know, here to that wall... Of hitting a deer that close is unlikely. Okay. You know, small game, you're going to have to be a lot closer. So, you know, the wasted energy, so to speak, is the round's going to keep going. Okay. So that'd be the only disadvantage to it. You know, again, SHTF scenario, you, you can make some exceptions. Yeah. But, no, they're, I mean, it, they're phenomenal rifles. Well, so here's, I told you that I haven't had the best luck, and there's nothing <laughs> wrong with my Winchester 3030. I do have one of the ones that was made in the 70s after Winchester was taken over by the Japanese manufacturer. It was, it's not an American gun anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't know that when I, my grandfather gave it to me years ago. He had gotcha. bought it from his brother, one of those things. Yeah. And, uh, but anyways, beautiful gun, beautiful oh, condition. Yeah. And uh, it was, the first deer that I ever shot at and missed <laughs> was with that. We were out hunting. We were at his favorite place. We were actually where we spread his ashes a couple mm. of years or last year. We spread was that last year. Yeah, we spread Grandpa's mm. ashes. And uh, so you know, I'm this nervous, probably 14 or 15 year old kid at the time, mm-hmm. and I'm out there, and we had been sitting out, and it's freezing cold, yeah. and you know. I've never, even from then, never been that much into hunting. I did it because Grandpa was into it. Mm-hmm. But we're sitting out there. We're all day long. We're just waiting. You know, we saw a couple way off in the distance, way too far to ever shoot. Yeah. Um, we are literally getting to the end of the day. Grandpa's like, well, we should probably start packing it up, blah, blah, blah. And we stand up and we turn around because we had this little bench that we had set, like a rustic blind out mm-hmm. in the woods. We stand up and we turn around and there is this little button buck, hmm. not button buck, um, spike. Uh, okay. He's got these little like maybe, you know, six inch spikes coming out of the top of his head. I don't yeah. even think there was any forks on him. There, there mm-hmm. he might have been a three or four point tops, not a big buck, and he is going right along where my grandpa had put some of that doe estrus, you know, the doe mm-hmm. urine. And he's going right along this trail where nice. my grandpa had done. It. He's got his nose right to the ground like a dog. Nice. Just, you know, he's going at. <laughs> And so my grandpa's like, oh, Keith, go ahead. And, you know, I says, all right. So, you know, I get my, and I'm standing there and I'm probably shaking. And I just, you know, I boom. And that thing just sh- runs off. And, you know, my <laughs> grandpa thought maybe I hit it, but mm-hmm. we never found a trace of anything. And yeah. so, but so years later, now I, I probably only go hunting maybe every three to four years. Not a big mm-hmm. avid hunter. Like I said, um, years later, my daughter or my ex-wife is pregnant with my daughter. Mm-hmm. I was planning on hunting that year. Uh, my ex-wife says to me, um, when she was my wife, obviously, mm-hmm. and she says, I don't really want you going all the way to the UP. There's no cell phone signal, blah, blah, blah. Well, a good buddy of mine uh, called me up, and he said, hey, he says, I've got an open spot um, about three hours north of here. He says, why don't mm-hmm. you come on up and hunt with us? And so I asked her, and she's like, yeah, that's fine. She goes, you got cell phone reception there. If something happens, you can be down you know, three hours. You can yeah. drop everything go. I said, okay, cool. So I drive up. And uh, opening morning, we go out, um, sitting there, calm, nice day. Doe comes walking through right, right about 10 o'clock or so. We had actually agreed. There was uh, three of us on our hunting. Mm-hmm. And we had agreed that we were going to all go back to the um, 
uh, cabin that they had there, which was more of a house, but back to the cabin. Mm -hmm. And we were going to have breakfast at, I think it was like 1030 or something. Okay. And so it's like 10 o'clock, a little after 10 o'clock, and I'm sitting there. And I'm at the side of a, um, I guess you'd call it like kind of a, a ridge. And my buddy is hunting the other side of the ridge, and he is physically probably only 75 feet from me. Mm -hmm. But there's no way I could get to him because there's dirt and rocks between yeah. us, you know. And so I'm sitting on the other side of the ridge. So I'm sitting there, and uh, a little left 10 o'clock, and I'm kind of like, oh, well, you know, there's nothing out here this morning, blah, blah, blah. And I hear, and I'm like, hear a little whistle. And I'm like, what the hell? Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, this doe comes walking through. <laughs> So he was warning me because he was whistling from the over the roof that, that a doe was coming my way. So this little doe comes through, and she's just kind of looking, and she sniffs, and she's looking at, and she comes over and eats a little bit from my bait pile, and then squats and pisses right on my bait pile. And I'm like, what What are you doing? Not cool. Yeah, so then she takes off, and I'm like, okay, well, that was interesting. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, so then, uh, you know, I don't know, 10 minutes go by, nothing, nothing, nothing. And, you know, it's getting on to our 1030 breakfast or whatever time we had agreed on. Mm -hmm. And so I stand up and I set my Winchester 3030 right up there against the uh, the tree. And I'm putting, I had a little backpack with some goodies on and stuff and, you know, some supplies and I'm putting it on. And all of a sudden, I just see something out of the corner of my eye and this buck comes walking through hmm. and he is got probably one of the most interesting looking racks he's a good eight point buck mm -hmm. i could count the points on him eight point buck Oops. but yeah there you go eight point buck but he's, he had a fairly narrow rack on him mm -hmm. but the base of the rack i mean was like the size of a coke can Jeez. huge i mean he just had this narrow rack with these huge huge horns yeah you know just just solid or antlers nice. not horns but solid and he was a big buck too mm -hmm. and i'm like Man, I'm like, that's a nice looking deer. So, you know, I get my Winchester and, you know, this time I, I kind of like level up and I'm, I'm looking and I'm like, all right. And I, I'm all calm and he's not that far away. He's mm -hmm. like maybe, maybe 70 feet from me. Oh, wow. Yeah. And he comes and he's, you know, he's sniffing the bait pile and I don't have a scope or anything on this yeah. gun. This is old fashioned iron sights, yep. you know? And so I calm, deep breath. You know, you know, I boom, you know? Mm-hmm. And he just runs away. I go, man, that did not like act like a deer that just got shot. <laughs> mm -hmm. So my buddy all of a sudden comes running around. He's like, you got him, you got him. And I'm like, what do you mean? And he, I says, you saw him? And he goes, yeah, so I was whistling. And I says, I thought you were whistling because of the doe. And he goes, what doe? <laughs> he goes, no, there's a buck milling around out here. He must nice. have been on the trail of the doe, you know? Yeah. And so uh, I says, man, I says, I don't know. He did. And I said right to him, I says, I, he's close. Mm -hmm. I says, but. Sure didn't act like a deer that just got shot. Yeah. And uh, so he says to me, he's like, man, no, no, there's, you had to have gotten him. You had to have gotten him. We look over there. There's no blood. There's no hmm. fur. There's no nothing. And so we start walking around all afternoon in the immediate area. We mm -hmm. do not find a trace of anything. Bummer. So we come walking back, and he is, him and his dad, uh, the other two guys is hunting with they're kind of ribbing me. They're like, oh, buck fever and blah, 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 and this and that, you know, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, you jumped or whatever. I'm like, man, I am not that bad of a shot. I'm like, I am, I'm not any sharpshooter by any means, but yeah. I'm like, I'm not that bad of a shot. And we come back, and uh, they're like, well, where was he? I'm like, he's right here. I says, he's right by the edge of the bait pile, blah, blah. So I found an old rusty coffee can, and I set it on a stick, and I put it right there, and, mm -hmm. and I said, watch this. I said, I can shoot that, no problem. So I go back to my blind, and I go, Boom nothing <laughs> and my buddy goes huh do that again boom oh uh i'm pretty sure that that hit the dirt like 10 feet before the stick <laughs> and i go no and he goes aim like five feet high and i'm like what he's like, yeah aim like five feet high mm -hmm. so i aim up and i hit i boom and I end up shooting the base of the stick. <laughs> and he's like, dude, what's going on? So he comes over and he's like, he's like, there's something screwed up. You bent your barrel or something. I'm like, there's no way I bent the barrel on mm -hmm. this thing, you know? And he's looking at it and he's like, he goes, hey, where's your sight block? <laughs> and I says, what? He goes, you know, a little block. Looks like a little pair of little yeah. stairs on the spring-loaded sight in the back. Yeah. It's just missing. <laughs> I had knocked it on something while walking out there. And oh, it's just missing. So I shot into the ground. That sucks. Yeah. 
Oh. Or in or in the air or I don't know whatever it would have been, but yeah, <laughs> no, 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 the ground. It was the ground. Yeah, definitely the ground. Definitely ground. But oh no, my, well, you finish. I gotta. No, that was it. I just I um, so my luck with that Winchester's not been very good <laughs> over the years. So I I have my grandpa's thirty out six hunting rifle. A good good rifle. And good I, rifle. At, and I I would suggest I would have that at the top of my list rifle wise. Okay. Um. Just yeah, the ammo's a little heavier, but you've got distance. You've got accuracy. If you need to distance for self-defense, you've got it. You can hunt damn near anything with it. But Those rounds are pretty much available anywhere in Michigan, at least. That's the biggest thing, ammo availability. Yeah. And so this, this, like I said, it was my grandpa's rifle. And this, there's some relevance to this story. So he was out west hunting. I think it was Wyoming. Okay. And I don't know if anybody else in the family even knows this story. You know, I always talked to him and learned about why he had these guns or certain things that he had. And he used he was a doctor. He used to go hunting with these doctors usually once a year, every other year out west. Oh, okay. Same same grandpa that owned the old Jeep. Gotcha. Yeah, yep, yep. yep. I was getting to that. <laughs> and he was telling me this story. They're out there one day and he's you know, he's a doctor. Mm-hmm. If it's a long distance shot so now it might not be as acceptable to do this, but if it's that distance of a shot, you have a large margin of error. So his thing is, you know, aim for the head. If you miss, you're not going to hurt it. Okay. That's kind of his reasoning back then. Yeah, okay, okay. So That's all, that My grandpa used to do that too, yeah. Yeah, so he, I don't remember the distance he said the gun was sighted in for, but it was a 200-yard shot. And he's watching this thing. So he, he lines up, and he takes the shot. And the deer puts his head back down to feed, and then it fell over. <laughs> and when he got there, he couldn't find the hit. But the deer is still there? Yeah, the deer was there. It was dead. And but, he but walked, there's no hole in the deer. Oh, he had to study it, but he found it. Okay. And for anybody listening, this might be a little more detail than most people would care to hear. So, forewarning. Um, he found the hole. It went right at the base of the skull and just severed the spine right at the base of the skull. That's how my grandpa used to try to shoot him, too. Yeah. yeah. And years that's, ago. it just dropped it. Yeah. And it was that trip. Mind you, this God, that had to be. Well, it was whenever JFK was around, so seventies, uh, sixties. He 60s. was assassinated, I think, in sixty three, if I remember so right. So this would have been early sixties, sixty three or earlier. Yeah. So think about you know everybody now high powered rifles long distances. All these guys have these high powered rifles at the airport and the plane. They all flew planes. That's mm-hmm. they went out there. Well, JFK happened to land in that same airport. I don't remember if it was the day they got there or the day they left. Okay. There were news cameras out there, and my grandpa got to meet him and shake his hand. And he got a copy of the 8 millimeter film, black and white back then, of him meeting and shaking his hand. Oh, very cool. And I actually have that. That's really cool. And I've, I've looked online before for that day, and I found two other film clips from different news stations. Uh-huh. None of them are this angle. So this is a totally different angle to that meeting that nobody else has. That's really that cool. Yeah. That's really cool. And my grandpa's one, you know, I, I highly credit him. It was between he and my dad. But my first Jeep ride was with my grandpa, 86 Grand Wagoneer. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that kind of got me down the path to where I am today in terms of Jeeps. You know, a large part of love of the outdoors. He had the farm that's across the river from my house. So we were always there every weekend in the summer. You know, shot my first gun over there, a little lever action twenty two. Nice. And, I mean, that snowballed into where we are here. You know, love of 4 by 4s Jeeps especially. Yeah. And probably why I started liking guns so much. And, off, and off-road shows that we don't talk about 4 by 4s or off-road stuff I at all. You mentioned Jeeps. You mentioned excursions. Hey, uh, well, you know, <laughs> hey, at least um, let's... One thing I'd like to do before we close this out. Do you got anything else for this episode? No, I mean, that, that's we could go all day. What happened to the cup that I gave you? It's right here. What, and now you're drinking out of a kitty cup. What's that's water and it's orange. Oh, all right. <laughs> um, I would like to do something. This is episode 50. I never thought we'd get this far. Uh, are we going to get uh, anybody else to say anything? I think maybe we have him do the closing. It's written down. You can read it. What's up, y'all? <laughs> oh, come on. Say it in the mic at least. Let's be real quiet and we'll have him do it again. 
Oh, come on. Oh, man. So that <laughs> was producer Andrew who said he was going to speak on episode 50. But um, before I, I you do still, your closing. I still think that we had other qualifiers for that. We'll find out later. I would like to cheer to episode 50. Um, we, Absolutely. We're, you know, that's a milestone. Well, we got to make the cheers and then we cheers. Cheers. What, what do you mean make the cheers? Well, you, you, you say something and then you cheers. Well, like I said, to episode 50 and to, uh, I don't know, 8,000 more. To our more. grandfathers. To our grandfathers. For starting us down this path, and may we always continue and remember. I like that. Thank you. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mr. Oh, Johnny good. Orange. Well, who, by the way, has far more, far more. <laughs> I just noticed this yesterday. Far mm-hmm. more um, followers online than uh, I do. <laughs> uh, go ahead and read your... Uh, <laughs> Well, if you guys do have any questions and comments about this or any of our other episodes, feel free to join our 4x4 Talk page on Facebook. Leave us a question or a comment. If anything you want to hear us go over, let us know. Uh, you can just find that searching 4x4 Talk on Facebook. A few quick questions get you in there, and you can comment away. Uh, for more bonus content, be sure to check out our Patreon account. It's patreon.com slash Radio. Get you access to that. Lowest lows $2 a month. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button in the bottom of the video player. Make sure to hit subscribe so you see this and other new content as we release it out there. And as of course, and as always, have a good one and thanks for listening, everybody.